Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Brown, and we are here in Bellevue, Washington. And we're here with my amazing assistant, Jed Leonin, and our incredible patient, Jody, who has volunteered to let us show you how to use Tokuyama's newest material, which is uh, Omnichroma and Omnichroma Blocker. And as we go throughout the, the procedure today, I will talk about some of the things that I like about this material, its handling properties, how it's able to blend in with the tooth structure, and also how it helps cut overhead costs with minimizing having to keep so many different materials in stock. So with the application we're gonna start with today, we're gonna to work on teeth number eight and number nine, where Jody has some incisal wear and a little chip on, on one of them. And so we'll show you how to use these two materials uh, together and how to really make a nice restoration and simplify the process. So with that said, let's get started. So we've got Jody ready to go here. Her teeth are isolated using the Optrigate lip retractor. And you can see how number eight is a little bit shorter than number nine. And there's some little incisal chips on, on both of those. Now color wise, I'm just gonna hold a shade tab up here and you can see that she's somewhere in that A3 to A2-ish range. And then when you look up close, you can see there's just a little bit of subtle modeling. So some little whitish effects. And so with the Omnichroma, it's gonna be able to pull from that, especially on number nine. On number eight, where we're gonna add a little bit of length there. If we wanna go for ultimate aesthetics, then we can add a little bit of those white effects with some of the Estelite colored resins. Um, so we'll see if we can do some of that as well but the, the process of getting it on is very simple and straightforward. So as we know for good adhesion for a composite, especially on a front tooth where we're adding a little bit of length and that protrusive action can potentially chip and break these composites down, we wanna make sure we're getting the best possible restoration for her to be able to function with and smile with. And so, oh, thanks Jed. So, what we need to do is right across this little incisal edge is just put a real small bevel, little infinity bevel that's just gonna feather right into that incisal uh, portion here. It's not gonna be a long one, just real, real subtle. And so let's start with that. And I'm just gonna use a real fine grit diamond, a little flame tip diamond. And we'll bring the suction up here, Jed. These work good with the Optrigate because you can just tilt this little thing up and keep the air from going up the patient's nose. All right, so we'll hold this at about 45 degrees and just real gently. And then I'll just roll that right up just a tiny bit. That's all it really needs, very subtle. And I wanna do the same thing here on number nine, just a real tiny bit. That's it. Now for the rest of the preparation here, we're gonna use air abrasion. And so this uses a real fine grit aluminum oxide powder. And we're just gonna come right across the surface. And that's it. If you don't have air abrasion, then you can just use a medium or coarse grit soft flex disc or whatever disc brand you have. And you just do a similar process where you can just feather things in, but you're also just kind of lightly roughening up the surface so that you get a better adhesion getting rid of those, um, the smooth enamel there. So. That's good to go. So for Jody's case, I chose to take an impression and then do a little wax up and then create this little silicone putty backdrop. And this is gonna help guide the incisal length that I'm going to achieve. And so I'll show you how that fits right in here. And that's it. So it'll be much easier for me to figure out 
where I need to get the length, but also, more importantly, it's gonna help me control the thickness of these materials because with the blocker, the way that works is we're, we're adding length to a tooth. So Omnichrome is gonna grab the color of the tooth to which it's bonded in order to achieve its final color in the restoration. So that works great when we're gonna keep it on the surface of the tooth, but when we start adding length, the further away from that enamel edge, the less tooth structure we have to grab color from, and so we need to help block out some of the surrounding colors that are going on in the mouth with the shadows and the darker colors. And so I wanna be able to control the thickness of that blocker layer. If it's too thick, then we're gonna have too much light blocking and you might see a little bit of a, an opacity. If it's too thin, then we don't have enough blocking of the light. And so with this little backdrop, it really helps control getting that ideal thickness of about a half a millimeter is what we're, what we're shooting for. And uh, it's just easier to control this way. So let's do it. Let's do our etch here. We'll start with a little bit. Now, when I do the etch, we know that we're not gonna really have to cover too much onto the facial in reality, but I use the air abrasion or the soft flex disc to prepare the surface of the, of the enamel beyond where I'm actually gonna take the composite. So that way I know for sure I'm gonna get a good hidden margin because when you try to finish and polish a composite on enamel that has been unprepared with abrasion, then it's harder to, to get that composite to feather in perfectly. You'll see just a slight little polishing difference between them, or you might be able to get some staining that'll happen at that interface over time. So, all right, we'll go ahead and rinse our etch off. Jody, this stuff has kind of a sour flavor, so we'll do our best to keep it off your tongue. If it happens to get back there, we'll blame Jed. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we've got a nice surface there. Now we're gonna be using the um, Tokoyama's Universal Bonding Agent. It's a wonderful agent because um, it truly is universal in every sense of the word. So one of the things I like best about it is it's very simple to use. You just have your part A and part B that you mix together and then there's no light curing necessary. So in situations like on a back tooth where it's hard to get to or it's in a deeper preparation where it's hard to get the light to shine, you don't have to worry about that because it's not light sensitive. So we just get it on, thin it out and proceed. Okay. And then when you're doing two teeth next to each other like this to make sure we're not gonna bond the teeth together before I take the next step, I'm just gonna use a little interproximal uh, opening tool to make sure that the resin isn't sticking there. And then our first layer is going to be our Omnichroma. Let's actually get the, yeah, mm -hmm. just the, yeah, the regular Omnichroma. So for Jody's case, we're going to do this one a little more, um, with the kind of ultimate aesthetics in mind. So I'm going to put just a real thin layer of the Omnichroma on the lingual side. So I'm going to put just a little bit on this little putty thing first on the, on the shelf, lightly hold it into position, and then I'll just remove the excess. And then I want to make sure that I'm leaving a little ledge here where that incisal cable surface uh, margin is. Pushing all the excess back towards that lingual portion. And 
and that looks like we're okay. All right, Jed, go ahead and cure that. We'll cure for a good 10 seconds, and then we can safely take off our little backdrop. And then we'll cure the lingual side. And just like that, we've got our incisal length right where it needs to be. And then we'll do the same thing now for just getting this little slight indentation here on number nine. So this one doesn't need much at all. And this one we're really just gonna use a single shade or a single layer of Omnichroma. We don't need to worry about the blocker on this left side because it's such a small addition that we're doing on the, on the tip. There we go. And then we'll just bring this excess, rather than peeling it off, like we did on the other side, we're just gonna wrap it now up onto the facial side and feather that in. Okay, that looks good. So that's it for number nine. One layer, one and done. And we can be totally confident that that's just gonna blend in absolutely perfect. Okay, same thing, we'll cure the lingual side. Okay, so let me just smooth off this little embrasure. All right, so perfect, now we're working with a good foundation. Now for the, the, the Omnichroma blocker layer, essentially we're gonna use this as an artificial dentin layer. We're trying to replace the dentin, which is the more opaque part of the tooth, reflects more light than the enamel does. And so on this one, Jody doesn't have a whole lot of incisal translucency to worry about. Um, in cases where somebody did have a lot of incisal translucency, then all you need to do is shape this blocker layer as the dentin would normally be in uh, the, the natural state. Um, and you could leave a little bit of that incisal halo effect and translucent effect there if you needed to. But in Jody's case, since there's not any translucent effects we need to worry about, I'm gonna bring this blocker layer right up to the full incisal edge of the length. And then I'm just gonna remove the excess here by pulling it down gingivally. And then I can just control the thickness based on what it's essentially looking like as it's blocking it out. Now I'm not bringing this up to full facial contour because I still need to add more Omnichroma over the top. So that looks really good. So we can go ahead and cure that. Now, um, if all we were gonna do is just put our final Omnichroma layer on, that's all we need to do, it's perfect. But in Jody's case, since we have a little bit of that real subtle white calcification that's visible, if we don't add that into this composite, then it's gonna look a little bit different than the other tooth because that's it's just part of the tooth. We need to replicate it. And so this is where we're gonna do um, two things to get this final result. With the blocker, um, 
because it's not on there perfectly smooth, I actually created some little vertical striations in it because in nature, that's how dentin is. If you were to just strip away all the enamel from a tooth, you would see little vertical parts. And part of what that does is it helps scatter the light so that it doesn't um, just go straight through. And that helps with some of the natural effects of, of placing composites to replicate tooth. So if I wanna add some little subtle white effects in the tooth, um, if I were to just do that right now on this dentin layer, it's gonna fill in some of those little vertical grooves and we don't wanna have vertical white lines on the tooth. So first I'm gonna put a little ultra thin layer of the Omnichroma just to make a nice smooth flat surface. And this is where I can put some of this white effect in and I can control how the white effect is gonna be flowing onto that. Okay. And we'll just, again, this is not to full facial contour just yet. All right, go ahead. Okay, so I'll just put a little drop of the white effect resin here. I'll just put a little bit right on my glove or wherever you want to put it. And then I'll just take a little dab. And this stuff's very intense, so you want to be careful not to overdo it. And just kind of looking at how it is on the adjacent tooth and even feathering it into what it looks like on the mid facial part of this tooth. You just put a little dot and then kind of feather it out from there. All right, that looks pretty good. So on the video, you may not even be able to catch it, but on the still picture that we'll be taking, you'll be able to see it clearly. Did you hear it? Okay. And then we can do our final top layer of Omnichroma to full contour. And then when we polish this back, those little white effects will just be ever so slightly visible just like it is on the natural tooth. And they'll stay there. They won't just get worn away. If you were to just put this, build it to full contour and then put a little bit of the white effect on that outer layer, it's not gonna stay long-term. It'll just rub right off. And again, I'm feathering this beyond the final finishing of where I anticipate the composite to end, but that's okay because it's just gonna polish back and we're not damaging the tooth structure at all as we do that. wipe off some of the excess here. Now the Omnichroma has really good handling characteristics. It can really smooth and blend just so nice. Some composites are very stiff. This one moves around really nicely. So And there's a little fiber. Oh, well, we might have to just remove that. Put another layer on. Let's cure it first, and then we'll put the other layer on. All right. that so I wiped it off and we'll just add a little bit back on here
All right, finishing and polishing. You'll find that uh, this stuff polishes really well um, and holds its shine. So first, we're gonna use a disc to just get the initial outline form. And I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but because we use the air abrasion, that is just an absolutely seamless transition from composite to tooth structure. Now to get the nice surface texture. We don't want it to have just a perfectly smooth, perfectly flat, overly shined composite because that's not what natural teeth look like. So you need to look at the teeth you're trying to match at different angles, looking at how the light reflects off of it. Some people do have really smooth teeth, but most people have some texture to it, the way the light, again, reflects off the tooth better. So we want to try and build some of that back in so it matches not just with color, but with texture as well because if the texture is not right, that can affect the color or more so kind of the grayness of the tooth. The smoother something is, the more light passes through it. So I'm gonna use a slow speed tool with a little carbide and this will help create the texture we need. And it doesn't do anything to the natural tooth, to the enamel, because it's running at a real slow speed and it's just gonna leave a little stippling effect almost to match some of the textures that are happening on the tooth we're trying to match. Okay, and then we'll just check things out from an incisal view to make sure that our facial contours are matching up. Good. Sorry if I'm tickling your nose there, Jody, as I'm moving my fat thumb around here. Yeah, it's looking better.
Let's do just a little bit more here and then we'll call it good for the Is that vibration okay, Jody? Mm -hmm. It's gonna feel a little chattery for just a second. Okay. All right, now to get the final polish here, we've got two more. First, we'll use a kind of a rubber polish, composite polishing uh, tip here. And you have rubber points, rubber discs, rubber cups. They all work. I tend to like the disc shape better because I can just control things better. And I like to keep the tooth a little bit wet. And then I can see as I'm doing it what the texture is finishing like. Because essentially this acts like a, like a pencil eraser. So you added all the texture. But sometimes it's a little too much. And so now we can just essentially erase it back to match what it needs to be. Perfect. And natural enamel is never overly polished. And so at this point, we're pretty close, but we want just a little more, a little more sheen to it, but not overly shined up. So this polishing brush works really well. This is a uh, silicone impregnated polishing brush. and it will polish without removing texture. And I found that with the Omnichroma, this is really the only, the last step you need. And it just really turns out nice. So now keep in mind that when we're working on your teeth with the fish lips on, your natural enamel dehydrates a lot. And so that makes it change color mm -hmm. and the little white spots that are there become more accentuated. Mm -hmm. And so, but the beauty is, you know, with Omnichroma, even though the tooth is dehydrated, it's, it still blends in, it'll match no matter what. So that's pretty neat. Um, it'll just blend in even better as time goes on over the next couple hours as things fully rehydrate. But um, there you go. So a nice seamless transition up in there. 